family. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible tells us as well, go magnify the Lord with me and let us all his name together. Psalm 100 tells us, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands, to serve the Lord with gladness, to come before his presence with saving, to know that the Lord, he is God, as he who has made us and that we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and sure enough, his truth endures to all generations. Shall we pray? Most gracious and eternal Father, we thank you for this hour that we have once again, for this gracious and wonderful Sunday morning. Father God, we're so thankful that we're able to go virtual, amen, and Facebook and live stream at this hour the people of God, Father God, to help others, uh, Father God, to help them in this time. Father God, I pray right now you stand in my body, think with my mind, talk with my tongue. Let me be your servant today so lives can be changed. We can be challenged, encouraged, and convicted, Father God, and even comforted in your spoken word. Now, Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. Oh Lord, this is your service prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we say, Amen. Once again, good morning to all of you. Uh, if you have your Bibles, journey with me, if you would, to the book of John. The book of John, the book of John chapter 4. Our lesson will come from that today. The sermon will be involved in that, uh, in these uh, scriptures for today. Uh, John chapter 4, and we pick up at verse 19. John chapter 4, verse 19. And the word of God says, The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain, and you Jews say that in, say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for our salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is the word of God for the people of God, for the hearers and the doers of his most precious word. I'm going to talk to you from this subject for a few moments today. True worship true worship and if you want to extend uh, that tag on the text true worship is really acceptable worship true worship is really acceptable worship true worship confusion and controversy surround the topic of what is acceptable worship for many folk how we worship is not a critical matter they feel that how one worship is a personal matter and that the individual determines what is appropriate or not. Christ has this encounter with the woman at the well at a place called Sakar, as it tells us in verse 7. When the woman discovered that Jesus knew all about her private life, she quickly changed the subject here in verse 19. Often people become uncomfortable when the conversation gets close to home and they try to talk around it or about, or even go try to change directions and talk to, about something else. The woman brought up a popular theological issue, the correct place to worship. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. But her question was merely a smokescreen to keep Jesus away from her deepest need. Jesus directed the conversation to a much more important point. The location of worship is not merely as important as the attitude of the worshipers. He tells her that God has set the standard for worship in which he said the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth for the Father is seeking such ones to worship him. In order to understand what is acceptable worship, we need to understand the purpose of worship. Yes, yes, yes. What is unacceptable worship and what constitutes acceptable worship or merely true worships. What is the purpose of worship? That's a great question that I know you probably just asked. What is the purpose of worship? Worship is so important in the life of, of a Christian that it should be our chief concern. Everything that the church uh, should do and everything that church does should begin, should proceed, and end in worship. Worship demands the concentration of the total personality, if you will, the intellect, the, the, the emotions, the mind, and the will. Well, that's worship. In its chief means of inspiring and motivating uh, the Christian character, and, and the conduct of worship is that so vitally important that it helps to, to enhance the character and the conduct of the Christian character. Worship help us to feel that, that we are more than flesh and, and, and blood. It, it reminds us that uh, there is a spirit, if you will, within. Let us look for at a few things we can learn about worship this morning right here, right here from our text. Pick up in verse 20. Verse 20, it deals with without tradition. If you were here with morning, I, this morning, I tell you, turn to your neighbor and say, it's without tradition. The Samaritan woman was so wrapped up in the fact that the Samaritans worshipped only in Mount uh, Gerizim and, and the Jews worshipped only in Jerusalem following David. The split had come in the days of Ezra and Nehemiah when the Samaritan had offered to, Samaritans had offered to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, but had, it had been rebuffed on Mount Gerizim. There was built a perfect temple, somewhat similar to the one in Jerusalem, a wonderful temple. They even set up their own priesthood, a fabulous temple. This word worship in the Greek proskuneo, amen, comes from two words. First, pros, meaning towards, and second, kaneo, meaning kiss. In other words, you move toward to kiss, to embrace. The word worship also means to bend or to bow. It means to do reverence or to prostrate oneself before worship, worship, worship. And it does not speak absolutely of the body. It has reference to the soul also. The bowing of the body and, and the soul helps our, our respect for God. Tradition. Tradition, yeah, tradition, as I mentioned. There are many people who place a great value on the traditions in worship. Listen now, what we worship determines what we become. I'm going to give that to you again. What we worship determines what we become. What we worship it term, determines what we become. It's not about a place. In verse 21, Jesus, Jesus wanted this woman to know, brothers and sisters, that there is no value in Mount Gerizim or Jerusalem. Wasn't any value in Mount Gerizim or Jerusalem. What are you saying, preacher? There is only one value in who, there is only 
want only value in the whom we worship. There is only value in worshiping God who revealed himself in Jesus Christ. Jesus right here, brothers and sisters, was telling that the Samaritan woman that the worship of God will be free from confinement to a place. Stay with me. Help me, Holy Ghost. The worship of God must supersede the place of worship. Listen, listen. There are some people, there are some people who refer to their local church, if you will, you've been in around a church of, uh, uh, for any significant period of time, you probably heard it, Holy Ghost Headquarters. Or we, or we got the spirit. We, 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 we got it going on. We, we just love Jesus that much because this, this is what, if you don't come to our church, if, you, if you're not here, uh, or even on this corner, you're going to miss the Holy Ghost. You're going to miss the spirit. But the Holy Spirit will set up headquarters in any place where the worship of God is going on. In times like these, if you don't know Jesus now, Help me, Holy Ghost, in this pandemic, in this coronavirus, in this COVID-19 and other names that have been given. Uh, if you didn't know him in 9-11, if you didn't know him in Hurricane Sandy, if you didn't know him in Katrina, amen. If you didn't know him, amen, when you, when you lost a loved one, amen. There's, you, you know, it's a good time to know him. Know that that will uh, it will make a good religious argument. You can say amen to that. Where are, where, where are you going to worship now? Where, 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 where are you going to worship uh, in the mountain or in Jerusalem? That that caused it caused many of argument in that day. And it causes many arguments as I speak right now. Yes, yes, scripture does enforce us to not to forsake Hebrews 10, 25, not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as, a, as believers, as a matter of some is, not to withdraw from the corporate strength of worship, amen, to, to, to fellowship with other brothers and sisters and to encourage one another by the day, because the day of judgment is drawing near. Yes, yes, we believers are supposed to come together, amen. And you, you know the unequally yoked folk, you should stay away. You should try to bring the unsaved in and all of that. And you could, you continue to be what you're supposed to do. But the Bible says in James 4.10, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up in his sight. Brothers and sisters, the point is authentic worship begins one on one. With you and Jesus, with you and the your, your Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, anywhere, anytime, and any place. Yeah. The next point, you you got to have knowledge of the object. If you're taking notes this morning, you write it down. You must have knowledge of the object. As I hasten to verse 22, 22, notice that Jesus told this Samaritan woman that the Samaritans were still in ignorance of the worship of God. They did not understand the character of God. They did not understand the character of God. You see, the Samaritans worship uh, by their system of worship. And it was incomplete. It was flawed, if you will, because it had no clear object. They knew some Bible. Well, yeah, they, they knew some Bible. They, they knew the book of Moses. They, they knew the law. Yeah, they, they, they knew all that. They, you, you yourself, uh, you've been around, been around folk. They, they know some word. They, they know some Bible. They know the law. Uh, thou shalt not kill. The book of Exodus. Amen. The Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not bear false witnesses. Amen. Uh, and, and all of that. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Amen. Steal, lie, all that. We, 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 we know the book of, of, of Moses. They knew that. The Samaritans worship in total ignorance because Jesus said, You Samaritans worship what you do not know. They went through the motions, help me, Holy Ghost, of worship. 
But there was no true worship. Listen, the Jews were, the Jews, the sex, if you look at it, let me unpack it a little more. The Jews were, were not the vehicle for salvation of mankind, no, no. But when Jesus said salvation, we're going to Sunday school now, salvation is from the Jews. Here's the meaning, meaning that, he, that it is available through Jesus Christ who was born of the seed of Abraham, who was a Jew. That was his genetic makeup. On the other hand, the Messiah was the only way. The Bible says, if you write, if you read it, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father what, except through me. He is the only way. For there is for there is, for there is, for if it is going to be true worship of God, there have, has to be knowledge of God. And our knowledge of God increases as our facts about him increase. Ask yourself, do you know him? It's really a good time to know him. Those songs we see, Jesus is on the main line telling yeah, what you want. These facts about God can only increase as we know Jesus Christ. Do, do you know him? Verses 23 and 24 is the invitation from God right, right here in the text. It's the invitation from God. The, the thing that was important to this woman was, was whether she should worship God we're going to pack it some more. Should she worship God in this mountain where the Samaritans worship him or should she worship in Jerusalem? Yeah. Jesus told her that the day was coming when she would not worship him in either place. It's in the text. Why? It tells us the text. Watch the text. Watch the text. But the hour cometh, and now is, it now is now, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking, underline seeking, such to worship him. People are, want people who are seeking God are making him a priority. They're chasing after him. Oh, bless his name. In other words, as the writer says in Hebrews, they're laying aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us, that corrals us, that, that confronts us. In other words, and run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. We've got to seek the Lord wholeheartedly. That's what he said, seeking to, to such to worship him. Seeking. God like that. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It is not where, but how you worship him that is important. Not, not, not where, but, but how. The phrase in truth means in a true way. In a genuine way. And this would speak to all people. The Jews, Samaritans, even the Gentiles speaks to us today. Red, yellow, green, black, and white. Amen. This is what that, that, that song is saying. No one's perfect in this sight. It, it, it speaks to all of us. All need to worship God by recognizing God's character and nature as well as our common need for him. Oh, you, you, we need him. God is spirit. No man has seen God any time. He's spirit. God is spirit. He's not limited to a place and a, and a time where we are. Jesus defined real worship. Oh, yes, he did. We worship in truth because we worship what is true. Let me say that again. We worship in truth because we worship what is true. Our Lord answered her very adequately. Oh, bless his name. You and we don't have to run from place to place. 
Help me, Holy Ghost. Many of us in our lives, we tried to run from building to building. Finding the Holy Ghost. Finding Jesus. The prophet says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Not that he's lost, but why your, your heart is near to him. Why, why you can embrace him. Why you can, you can listen to him. Like you, we must listen to our third ear, with our third ear, and see with our third eye. The words running from this church to that church. We are the church. You can say amen to that. The ecclesia called out from the world, set aside, set apart. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You are a new creature in the Lord. True worshipers worship him in spirit. I feel some help coming in here. Amen. I belong to him by myself, but with human wise, but the Lord is with me. The spirit is with me. True worshipers worship him in, in spirit and in truth. Worship changes the worshiper into the image of the one worshiped. Oh, yes, it does. Jesus told his disciples on the Sermon on the Mount in the book of Matthew 5, verse 13, tells us, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its flavor, how should it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but thrown out and trampled under the foot of men. As I hasten to a close here this Sunday morning, may the Lord bless you real good. America's problem, we worship everything but God. Oh yeah, let me say that again. America's problem is that we worship everything but God. And that's why America, a preacher of mind, has lost its flavor. We don't taste good like we used to. We took prayer out of school. They've taken the, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, the Ten Commandments, amen. Even in our own hometown, out front of the courthouse building, America has lost its flavor. City by city, state by state, county by county, we have lost our flavor. We have lost our taste for God. We have lost the taste of worship. Uh, as I close, but we've got to get our groove back, as they say, amen. We've got to get our worship back. It's not about a building. You're not in a building now. You're sequestered at your own home or your own apartment or your own condo or where you, or where you are. You're not, some many of you not working on your job right now. You're working at home, amen. That's a good place to worship because if you worship, you've got to get your groove back. You've got to get your worship back. You've got to get your flavor back. You've got to get your taste back. Worship with clear our vision. Worship will change our priorities. Worship will revive our hearts. Worship will remold our attitudes. I'm talking about worship. Help me, Holy Ghost. Worship will unite what Satan has divided. Worship will recover what sin has destroyed. Worship will smooth out what demons have afflicted. Worship will set our affections on things above, not on COVID-19. Worship will build our trust in God. Worship will give our taste back. We are this whole world around us is unflavorable. Don't taste good. When you worship, when we worship God, bring the faith, the Holy Spirit will be gratified. The Bible will be ratified. The church will be edified. The soul will be satisfied. The Father will be glorified. Amen. And the Son will be magnified. Oh, bless his name. True worshipers, and it's a good time to continue to worship if you're not worshiping. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. Continue to worship the true and living God. Because he's alive and well. And he sees everything that's going on right now. May God bless you. May God keep you. True worship is acceptable worship. Amen. Amen. Whoa.